to bring this outbreak to a close as quickly as possible, we need help to get the word out to everyone, to encourage them on the importance of receiving the vaccine, to protect both themselves and to protect others, including those that I mentioned who are vulnerable, it's very important that those who have not been vaccinated do so as soon as possible. The measles outbreak is not only real, but it is spreading. Whooping cough is not talked about as often, but it is also a major health concern. Politicians are making hay with their comments, often completely wrong and badly informed. And some parents say the government does not own their kids, so there is nothing more to say about their denial of vaccinations. So then who are you going to call to best explain why all of this is happening? We call the 17th Surgeon General of the United States, a combat-decorated Vietnam veteran, and personally speaking, always a pleasure to welcome a fellow native New Yorker to Midpoint. Richard Carmona joins us today. General, thank you so much for being here. Happy to be with you. Thanks so much for the opportunity. My pleasure. But I have to start us off on a very down note, because within the last few minutes, we've gotten word from Chicago that five babies all under one year of age at a suburban Chicago daycare center have been diagnosed with measles. This is what we were fearing would happen, and now it has come to Chicago. General, this has got to send up a flare to everybody about this disease. This is not about personal choice anymore. This is about a disease that we thought was gone, but it's back thanks to those who won't vaccinate. You're absolutely right, Ed. Uh, this is a major, major problem for our United States. We have the individual's rights to decide in a democracy uh, up against the rights of society to be safe. And there's a compelling reason why people need to be vaccinated because at this time, this disease is spreading. The cost of care is an issue as well. And significant morbidity and mortality is going to uh, mount up if we don't do this. Let's so all children should be vaccinated. Let's talk about a fact here. I said all of these children are under one year of age. The facility that they were at was a suburban Palatine learning center. I don't want to put out the name of the learning center there, but they have children here that are six weeks to 12 years of age. So this is what we're talking about, isn't it? Not necessarily the fact that there may just be babies, but there are children there. Somebody apparently had measles. It can spread so quickly and so easily when you are in a contained environment, correct? It's a very contagious disease. And when you're in a contained environment, especially in classrooms and clubs, basketball teams, baseball teams, it's a quick way to spread that disease. More importantly, that is the reason why every child should be immunized, so we're all protected. Why are we then not able to get it through to some people, General, about the, the disastrous potential for a disease like this? Because there are people saying, and I've heard this before, I'll bet you you have, but I've heard it on this show. You're the government. You don't own my child. I can do with my child whatever I wish, and you can't tell me what to do. How do you get through to these people? Well, the thing we try and do, especially as a Surgeon General, is to educate people and we hope to inform our parents with good information and they'll make good decisions that really are about preserving the health of their children. Every once in a while, people act through emotion. We've had a number of entertainers who have claimed that the government was covering up and actually uh, was preventing them from finding out the true reason about uh, immunizations. I mean, you have a lot of theories that are promulgated that have no scientific validity at all. But yet when we have a couple of media superstars make these comments, you start to see people even on the wealthy end of the scale not vaccinating the children. And then we have children who have difficulty getting health care because they're poor at the other end. And enough of those children then are not, not vaccinated and we see the disease spread. So as a Surgeon General, we always try and educate the public to make those decisions. But when the poor decisions of the individual are expressed and then weigh in on the society's right to stay healthy, the government does have a compelling reason to get involved and ensure that all children are vaccinated. Uh, General, I'm almost out of time in this break. We're going to take a break and come back. But you just touched on exactly where I want to take us next. And that is the fact that we are coming to a point where many people are believing that the government does need to get involved, despite the fact that so many people don't want the government on their backs. It's going to have to happen sooner or later. I see you nodding right now, and, and this, unfortunately, is something that we're going to have to discuss. Please stand by for just a moment here because I want to make sure we have time to discuss this. Now, there also was a time when the Surgeon General was a stalwart in speaking to the American people and leading the public health effort right out in front. The key word there was, what happened to the job itself? That and plenty more when Dr. Richard Carmona returns after the break and we discuss what is indeed an outbreak not only in one part of the country, but now we know in Chicago and other places around the country as well to children under one year of age. Midpoint continues.
dealing with more than just the current measles outbreak, but American health policy. Welcome back to Midpoint, the 17th Surgeon General of the United States, Dr. Richard Carmona. Doctor, let's talk about what we touched on just a little bit before a few moments ago. Are we getting to the point now, because we have actors and celebrities and people who are basically out there spewing all sorts of inaccuracies, that the federal government not only will, but has to get involved, because something like this affects everybody, and you've got to stop it. It doesn't seem as if state governments or local governments can do the job. Uh, you're right, Ed. Let's not forget the politicians making some uh inaccurate remarks as well and confusing the public at a time when the public is looking for informed leadership to give them direction. So what we have here really is this juxtaposition of the individual's rights in a democracy to do what they want versus the impact that it has on society. Smoking is an issue as well. We've struggled with that for decades where the Ameri I've had Americans tell me, I know you're the Surgeon General, but I can smoke because I'm an American. But the unintended consequences of that person smoking results in a lot of increased health costs, a lot of disease on people that are non-smokers. So we see it across the board, not just with immunizations. This is another manifestation of the challenges of a democracy. But the federal government's role is to ensure that our society stays safe and healthy. And when people refuse to do the right thing, the government does have a compelling interest to step in for the greater good of society to ensure that order is maintained and health is maintained. And in this case, if public refuses to immunize their children, I think the government does have a compelling interest in keeping society healthy and safe. Dr. Carmona, when I was a kid, I remember C. Everett Koop and others were always out front. The Surgeon General was someone you heard from. They did interviews. They talked to us. There was always a publicity that was surrounding them. i got to be honest with you. In the last decade, maybe more, people don't see much of the Surgeon General anymore. I would guarantee that probably most people couldn't even name who the new one is at this point. How have, what is the role of the Surgeon What should the role of the Surgeon General be in order to get out in front and help make some choices and help people make the proper choices here for the overall good. Well, thank you for that comment. Uh, you're absolutely right. The role of the Surgeon General is to protect, promote, and advance the health, safety, and security of the United States. The Surgeon General does that by speaking to the American people on a regular basis on a wide variety of issues, but also advising Congress, advising the President, advising secretaries of very cabinets, and working with anybody who needs pertinent health information. The Surgeon General is the doctor of the nation, not the doctor of the Republican or the Democratic Party. And the reason you don't see more of the Surgeon General is in the last time period you've re re uh, re uh, thought, uh, mentioned is that uh, the position continues to be politicized. Uh, these positions prior to the 60s and 70s were always career officers who got promoted. Politicians started reaching in and trying to affect the outcome of who might be a Surgeon General and bringing in people who had never been in uniform, bringing in people that might not have the training, experience and education. And so this position should be, in my opinion, somebody who has, through education, training, and experience, has earned the right to be a Surgeon General and has earned the rank of a Vice Admiral, which is all of the Surgeon Generals. The Army, Navy, Air Force, and the Public Health Service are all what they call a three-star position. So you can't just give somebody a rank and expect them to understand what it is to be an Admiral or a Surgeon General. It has to be earned. So my contention is we need to go back to what Congress's or in, uh, original intention was, is to have career public health officers that uh, merit promotion to that position. And of course, the president is the one who makes the nomination and then Senate confirms. But until we get back into that mode, we're going to have gaps in service, we're going to have politicization, and that's not good for the American public. I've only got a little bit over a minute left here, so let me ask you then. We have a whooping cough epidemic, or not, maybe not an epidemic, but certainly an awful lot of cases out there in America right now. Measles is spreading. We weren't ready for the Ebola crisis in this country. How bad is our public health policy at this moment, and how dangerous is it when it comes down to the fact it doesn't seem to be protecting Americans? Well, we do a pretty good job overall, but to your point, there are gaps in our system. We saw that with Ebola. We get, became complacent after 9-11 when we ramped up and spent a lot of money for training and education. And a decade or plus later, we have Ebola and there were nurses that hadn't been trained. There were doctors that weren't sure. We didn't know what to do with personal protective gear. The leadership gave out mixed information to the public who was confused as to what to do. So we really do need to tighten up more the more reason that we need a fully vetted, competent, uh, Surgeon General, who actually has earned the right to be Surgeon General, who commands the respect of the American public because of the imprimatur of the Surgeon General as being the health officer of our nation. Only 20 seconds left here. Whose fault is that? Who's dropped the ball here in making the Surgeon General an important part of our policy? 
Well, it's, it's politics. I mean, everybody wants to be in charge. You know, you see the politicians getting out in front of health things and they really haven't got the information and the staff has to backtrack what they said. The Surgeon General has, be, has been able to attain this unique position that the public trusts you all the time when you speak because you speak from a nonpartisan, non, non-political platform. You speak truth to science and truth to power. And the, and the public has uh, come to expect the Surgeon General to take the lead on these things so that they can get good direction to protect themselves and their families. Dr. Carmona, you've been very straightforward on all this. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. You've been on the ground level of this. Please promise me that you'll come back again and help us push forward some positive messages. All the time. Thanks so much for all you do, Ed. Great. Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Carmona. Something else that also could be considered public and personal health, a moral code. That's next right here on Midpoint.